Hi, my name's Ambrosia and I wanted to talk to you today about a book that I wrote. It's a guided journal called How to Heal a Broken Heart and it's a book, workbook journal about dealing with grief and loss that I wrote after my own partner of 16 years died. And it's basically all of the things that I really needed to talk about after he died that nobody wanted to hear. So it's got questions for you to answer and a little bit about my own journey through grief and how I coped with things. So it's illustrated all the way through with paintings and scribbles out of my own journals and diaries <clears throat> where I did work myself to, to just deal with the grief and work through it all. going to open it up to the contents page. So I've split it into different chapters um, about all of the things I think are really important about grief and the things we don't talk about nowadays that really need to be spoken about. And so you can read through the individual chapters and then there's space for you to write your own feelings and thoughts. So I thought maybe I'll just start reading so you can get an idea of what it's about. So many things can break our hearts. So this is the first page of the journal. Relationships break up, long-term friendships explode and dissolve. Death can take a friend, a parent, a partner or a child and the loss breaks something in us. A vital part of ourselves dies when we lose someone we love. Our hearts crack open, revealing a gaping emptiness where there used to be feelings of love, safety and connection. Our heart is one of the hardest things to heal because we don't talk about it. Our busy lives don't leave us space to grieve, to express the pain we feel, nor reconcile the loneliness. Yet so many of us stagger on, carrying the vast weight of our grief with us, unexpressed and unhealed. In older, kinder times, people were graced with a year of mourning after losing a loved one. Wearing black was a signal to those around you that you were in a dark state and could not be expected to behave or cope as you normally would. This gave the grieving person space to be miserable in peace and quiet. Many sane cultures have rituals that allow for the expression of grief, such as paid wailers at funerals, the rending of clothes or the ritual cutting of hair or the skin. There are funeral rites that go on for months instead of the puny one-off things we do in our Western society. In all cultures, just as in ours, after the appropriate time of mourning is deemed over, we are expected to go back to our normal lives, and it doesn't work. Statistics show that many married couples die within a year of each other. As a nurse, most of the suicide attempts I saw in emergency and psychiatric wards were due to the relationship breakups. People truly do die of a broken heart. An older man was brought into emergency by ambulance one day. His wife had died in her sleep, and when he woke and found her, he had a heart attack. In his grief, he wouldn't let any of us touch him or offer any, him any medical help in any way, until an older doctor approached him and engulfed him in a huge hug, saying, I'm so sorry. It must be devastating, and I completely understand that you may not want to stop what is happening to you so you can follow your wife, and I'll respect whatever you decide. <coughs> I lost my partner of 16 years about seven years ago and it was devastating. He'd been sick for some time and in and out of hospital for the last weeks of his life. In some ways his death came as a relief. After weeks of being by his side in the hospital and going home only to sleep and change clothes, I could finally rest. I felt as if I was sleepwalking as I dealt with the funeral home, his funeral, the endless paperwork of deaths, banks and more. <coughs> None of it felt real, and the grief was there like an endless numb emptiness. As the weeks went by, friends stopped dropping in. My grown-up children went back to their lives and husbands, and I went through the motions of living. Much of the time I didn't really want to live anymore. It was just too hard, too painful. But my kids had already lost their stepfather, so I had to find a way to stay alive. The only way to do that was to work through the pain and grief I was feeling and find some way through to the other side. I remember watching Downton Abbey at the time. One of the main characters lost her husband in a car racing accident. She proceeded to spend a whole year, clad in black, mourning. 
She wandered around like a lost, pale, beautiful ghost while her family and the staff catered to her, fed her and worried over her. She wasn't expected to lift a finger to do anything practical. Nobody expected her to function. She had space to grieve, cry and be miserable, whereas I had a few days off work and the funeral, and after that, everyone pretty much expected me to go back to normal, except I couldn't, and I still can't. So this is how I've basically started each chapter. I've written a little bit about my story, just to give you a little bit of perspective of how hard grieving actually can be. And then I've given space for you to write about what you needed to do. And I'm hoping this workbook can be a kind of helping hand, reaching out to help as you struggle to find your way through the labyrinth. The idea came to me while I was looking through the photos of what I had created in the last few years. One series of sculptures and pictures came about after a particularly brain, painful breakup last year. I locked myself in the ceramic studio for a month, listened to sad love songs crying and making fragile battered and broken hearts, one for each relationship I have mourned. There were my lost loves, my dead partner, past boyfriends, my father, all of the people who had broken my heart at one time or another. It was so painful and so therapeutic. And I got to thinking about designing a journal for others to use to help them heal. It would be a space for all those feelings that you can't share with anyone else when we are too vulnerable, too sensitive, and let's face it, when no one else wants to hear about them anymore. Eventually, even your best friends can tire of hearing about your lost love, yet the pain remains, unless you find a place to let it out. This is true for every heartbreak, be it through death, illness, or a breakup. So this journal is my gift to you. It is your place where I'm going to encourage you to embrace, explore, and let out all those feelings and thoughts that those around you may be telling you to get over. I don't think you can get over pain, grief, and loss. The only way out is through. Here you can acknowledge and truly feel that awful pain, cry with it, sob with it, dance with it for however long it takes till it is done.